uh, what does the uh, $14,520 include um, for the process? Good question, thank you. So this is how it works. For the 14520 that Councilman Norwood just talked about, it's going to be two tasks. On the first task is a project setup where we have a project kickoff meeting. Grindline Inter um, Entertainment Skateboard Park Company will come, they'll fly to Meridian to meet with the city as well as meet with the community of Meridian and surrounding areas. And it will be such like a like a big kickoff start. The second phase will be the uh, the second step. Will also like I said, a community meeting in person. They're going to design and review. The reason why they had to meet with the community because you cannot put a design without the people who is living here. That's going to be on the part. We want to have all that. Do you want a huffer? Do you want stairs? Do you want to grind? I'm learning all this stuff to my research. Do you want a bowl? Pump track. The next task is the conceptional design where there's a plenary, plenary um, conceptional design uh, that they will put. Maybe like also 3D models. They'll come back. They'll meet to uh, present this to the community. Adjust, make any changes because this is a true community involvement. They will design and review from uh, more from after that meeting, and then they will present the final concept. So this will also cause, cover their project startup, the principal lead design, the uh, design their design associates that's going to work entail with the the project, and also of course their travel expenses both times. And they're going to give us a full design so we can market that to even get more grants and more funding for this project that the community is involved in doing. As far as the $14,520, we, we have that money. We need to do a budget transfer. We can do that. There's no, no problem with that amount of money. Then once we get all the things Ms. Lindsay talked about, this matter of how much it's going to cost, that type of thing. I want to amend this to include a conceptual design from Jubilee Decorations to look at the city as a whole, Highland Park, Bonita, the city of Meridian, to develop a decoration system for our holidays. In the past, we patchworked this thing. We did a little decoration here, a little decoration there. We never had an overall plan for the total city. I'm talking about Bonita, downtown, North Hills, Highland Park. Uh, so we'd have a conceptual design to do the decorations. If we're going to do decorations in the city, let's again make it something that people will come visit and see. So I, I moved to amend to include the Jubilee conceptual design also. And that's James Cheney Park also. <laughs> another park. I'm just naming all Yeah, all the parks. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. All the parks. Yes, yeah, another park. About <laughs> five, six thousand dollars. Okay. This will be a conceptual design. Oh, so it would be coming. So the conception of design for the skate park and the Jubilee decoration. Yes, okay, that'd be fine. I need a second. A second. Second. Okay. All right. Now. All right, you ready to vote? Oh, I, um, I, I want to make sure people know that um, I, we're, we're only voting for the conceptional design and not nothing else more than that. The location will come once the company gets here and they meet with the community and the city officials, just making sure. Well, we're trying to give it to you as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne over here is ready to vote. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm ready to vote. Well, Yay! All that I have to say is um, pretty much be open minded on where they think is the perfect place right. for the for this uh, facility. Right. Don't don't hold no grudges. Just be in. Just just have a, a open mind to that. All right. All right. Ditto. All right. When you got it sold, get them to sign the paper. I've been told. Red vote. All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? No. Hallelujah.
right. Yay! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to see Miss Lindsay out there skating is what I want to see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Move the claims docket. A, section one, payroll. So moved. Second. Any questions? Read the vote. All in favor, yes. 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 Cass passes. B, section two, mandatory and operational items. So moved. Second. I got a question with this. Uh, two questions I want to ask. Have... Um, anyone with Public Works or Wagner, anyone, uh, being out there on 10th Avenue and 26th Street, when I mentioned about the water that was flowing behind the house and the, and the uh, family that's losing their property, have, have anyone of y'all been over there yet? Have y'all came up with some kind of solution to fix that problem over there? I think I understand the problem. I wouldn't say there's a solution yet. It's, a, it's been going on a long time. <clears throat> when would y'all think I'll probably be able to start on something? Before we I mean, it's, have it's, it's not easy, okay? I mean, it's, it's sheet piling walls that were installed 30 years ago. They did a good job and the city installed them. Um, but they are starting to lean a little bit. And there are some, um, you know, it's steel, the sheet wall that is steel that goes on both sides of the creek there. Yeah, but I, I know it's uh, multiple ways that water comes through, and on the side that the property is on, they're losing their. They're losing, yes, they are, because it is leaning. You know, uh, the soil is starting to, to uh, fall. To fall, you know, so she's not. She, she's losing use of some space there. We we can actually, um, you know, there's a couple of approaches. I, I haven't really gone to the drawing board yet on that, but there are some. Approaches to take, but I think it's gonna it's gonna take more than just it's gonna take a little bit of engineering from uh, um, from either a geotech or or sheet wall somebody that knows sheet wall materials and see if there's any rust. I mean, we're gonna have to investigate to see how much rust and whether we when will y'all be able to go investigate it? Um, you know, I, I'll probably have to probably can do that within the next thirty days. Okay. Yeah. I really because they really are having a hard time over there. And pretty much I hate to see someone that's paying the same amount of property tax and they're losing their property and it's not even there. So that's the reason why I'm going to ask the question about how soon y'all can get over there because it I mean, was, it's been going on a long time. You know, yeah. it, it, over time, just a, a little bit of a, a, a lean over time. It's, I don't see it as an emergency. Yeah. Well, well, I, I understand that, but they do. And we have to put ourselves in their shoes. When we're not in their shoes, we pretty yeah. much kind of think it's not a rush. Right. But we have to think of if it was us staying over there and that's happening yeah. to us, how important it is for it to be fixed. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. There's, there's some rust there, so we got to go in there and investigate. So I got to think about who's going to do that investigation. Okay. I, I hope it be done as soon as possible. Okay. And because we got the money for fixing those, um, those items, right? We have funding for that. Uh, we'll find it. Okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll find it. But uh, the second thing is uh, uh, oh, making sure these ditches around here in Meridian are cleaned out. Because we're having a problem with um, a lot of the, the all this rain we having, um, especially over there on Newell Road, um, over there on Old Marin Road, um, Grandview, uh, just a couple of places just to name. We're yeah. having an overflow of dirt and sand. It's filling up the the ditches and the water is coming on outside on the street and it end up coming into some of our residents' home. How often can we keep maintenance over the ditches, making sure they clean out from debris? So you're, are you referring to um, right off Newell Road, that location? But that's one of the locations. Street. Yeah. Yes, I, sir. I did that's visit one. that, that location. Sir? And, and I did visit that location, if that's the one, you, Miss uh, Ruffin, I think. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, how long? I, this is what I'm saying. I'm trying to get a time frame on how long, probably, maybe for you guys to go out there and I think, clean out these up. I, I, community development took care of that. I think that ditch was um, was cleaned out, is what I heard from Craig recently. You know. Yeah, it was discovered that uh, some uh, clippings and uh, wood that had been cleaned out of a yard or somewhere close by had washed down into a culvert and stopped it up. Uh, and uh, that has been addressed, so that issue should should have been eliminated. But these were uh, cut pieces of wood. They they came from somewhere in that neighborhood and actually got washed into the culvert to to stop it up. 
Well, that's one of the things I was asking. How often do y'all maintain the, the ditches around? I know uh, we, the city, don't own ditches, but we do right. buy a service for the flow of water that goes through it to try to keep it from being a, um, a bigger problem. Right. So, I mean, like last year, we cleaned out Gallagher Creek all the way from Highland Avenue Park, or Highland Park Drive all the way down past um, Hooper Street, I think, toward the railroad. <clears throat> that was a big project for us. Uh, we, we do, we clean out the ones that we have responsibility to clean out. Like you say, the ones that are private, that's not our responsibility. Um, but we can we can just keep it maintained and keep the flow of water for we people, won't have people need issues. to realize they own ditches and it's their responsibility just like just like it is to paint their house. We don't go paint their house. We're not going to go clean out their ditch either. They own the, they own the ditch. Yeah, I understand, but they taxpayers and they paying our salaries. And they didn't when they buy a home, they didn't go up there and say, "I want this ditch." So only thing I want to do is see if we can help our citizens here, Marie, and make sure they don't lose their property. Right. Or lose anything we, else. We, we go out often and we give them advice. You know, if that's what they're looking for, they're looking for us to do it. But, you know, illegally, we can't do it legally. You know, we can't go on there. We'll get arrested and go to jail for cleaning out somebody's private property. So that's the last thing we want to do. Yeah, I just know we can we can control the uh, clean out where the flow of water can maintain this, this travel can, where it's supposed to go. Um, right. Next thing I want to ask about is the way possible y'all can have some, um, someone in public works designated to go around picking up trash in Meridian? Um, or anywhere, because I'm seeing a lot of people just going there, they stopping at a stoplight, just dropping trash in the middle of the street. Mm. Mattresses, uh, furniture, and all those type of items. Is there where possible y'all can have someone just ride around every day to pick up trash? <laughs> I mean, um, we're looking at billets right now, and you'll see what we recommend in the upcoming budget. Um, I mean, we got two people just pick up litter just uh, prior to us cutting, you know, the cutting season. So we got two people. That's all we got. I recommend six more people just for litter in order to take care of our cutting um, program. Whether whether you'll be amenable to that or not is, is to be determined, but we need more litter people. Just well, I'll take, yeah, we'll take six, eight, ten. As long as we can just keep the litter picked up out the ditches, out the streets and mattresses. I know everyone around has been tired of looking at it. And you know, a lot of people, yeah. we're eating out more than we yeah. used to, and the trash is all over I, the place. I, I feel you. I mean, I, I, I hate it. I hate to see it whenever I drive by. You know, well, we're going to try to see how many trash people we can get or trucks you can use to, to yeah. pick this up on uh, inside the city. Uh, last thing, have y'all did any paving over in War Two yet? War Two. You want to answer that? Oh, well, yeah. Okay, now. I, I know, I, but I'm, you know, guys, you got to look at my, my side of it. I'm seeing there were trucks all over the place. Even if you can just park a vehicle over there, let me know you probably come that way. That'll help me out a lot. All right. Who ward is, um, I see, over there by Highland Park? Is that? I mean, I mean, I'm just, you already got all your face, so don't you know? I need don't, more. You I need already more. got I still got to speak up for my people, you know. Um, let us get out. We, you know, I'm just saying. And they're sliding over you, you and mine's and Joe's now. All right. Well, I understand. I congratulate them having their roads that get paid. <laughs> I really do. And I told them myself, I like the way these streets look. But I wouldn't mind <laughs> saying the same thing about my ward over there. And I, I'm supposed to be number two. It's supposed to be one, two, three, four, five. And I'm, I'm at the five. Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> so I'm just, just letting y'all put that out there for free. And I think in, in regards to that paper, I think if we see people dropping mattresses off, as citizens, and we need all of us need to get tag numbers and report that because we got you know. And I don't know how many littering tickets y'all give, but uh, we do have laws against littering. So if you see, of course, the police would have to see them doing it. Uh, oh, so if we give them the tick. If we give them the tag number, that's what I'm saying. I have a tag number. Somebody litter. Be car. Yeah, but be that's still not fair. Group, I mean, so they're like, well, they just, do like me, just pick it up, throw it back in the truck. I mean, right. somebody could be responsible. 
And they'll get in their family to fuss and be like, whoever drive my car that day, y'all did wrong. I mean, come on now. Well, it's a problem. I, before I could cut my grass, I had to get two tires, dirty diaper, chicken box, and two beer bottles out of my yard so I could cut my grass. So, and it wasn't mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> diapers? You don't have diapers around here? No more? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wow. All right. We ready to vote on that item, which is 6B. All in favor, yes. Yes. Opposed, no. No. All right. Motion carried 4 1. Now, number seven is a request for the city of Meridian to apply for ERBR funding to repair bridges at, sec excuse me, Grand Avenue and Sawashi Creek. 20th Street, Gallagher Creek, and 34th Street Bridge. This is to apply for funding to fix those. So moved. Second. All in favor, yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Now we move the presentation, gentlemen. Uh, notification legal advertisement. A, bid for large bucket truck. B, finance and radios for the MSWIN network. Next, mayor's report. He didn't just jump up there, did he? Wow. He didn't want me to jump. <laughs> yeah, told me. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that I want to talk about is the crime in the city of Meridian. And, you know, we, we've got a lot of crime, and, and it affects all of us, each and every one of us. And I, what I would like, if I'd like the chief to come up and give a slight report on the progress that they're making, and then I have something else. Chief. Good morning, council Good morning. members, uh, morning. city residents, businesses, mayor and CAO. Um, we always hear the negative stuff that Meridian Police Department is not doing, but we never hear the positive things that Meridian Police Department are doing, and they are doing positive things. Meridian police officers, as well as the investigators, have made seven arrests and five homicides from the year 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, with more arrests pending. These patrol officers, investigators, as well as MPD supervisors have worked tireless hours, both on and off duty, working and assisting other shifts as needed. They are doing special details, doing surveillance, thereby being proactive and more visible within this community. They are present at community events by assisting where needed for city, private, downtown events, as well as other community gatherings, races, and children events. They are receiving training in homicide investigations, evidence collection, customer service, weapons qualification, et cetera. Our Special Operations Division has been serving warrants with the assistance of the FBI and U.S. Marshals out of Jackson, Mississippi, and conducting surveillance on gang activity in multiple locations. We have five new officers that are in their final hiring stages. We have one that is at the police academy at this time. We have a cold case series that we run weekly to help with solving some of these homicides and asking the public for assistance with information. We have our neighborhood watch meetings that are also being done and others are being put in place. Meridian Police Department are doing some positive things. No, we cannot be everywhere, but we are working and doing what we need to do to help this community to become a safer community. We know that we're not going to stop everything that is going on within this community, but I promise you that we are trying very hard. These officers are dedicated. They are working long hours, as I said, and doing the best that they can do. Sometime if you see an officer out, if you just smile at them and thank them, 
it means a whole lot to them. This past weekend, they were out on Fifth Street. There were residents out there that stopped some of them, that thanked them for being out there. So our officers are doing some positive things. As I said, when I first got appointed, this is not about me. This is about Meridian Police Department and bringing this community as well as the police department together. And thank you so much. Again, you know, I know we have problems in our community and some things we can't stop, like all these shootings. Uh, people can shoot in the air. I got bullets off of my roof a couple of weeks ago. So, and, and wasn't nobody shooting at me. So let that be clear. I'm positive they wasn't shooting at me. I'd have been shooting back. But, <laughs> but you know, uh, the thing is, we have this random shooting that constantly affects our community. And we just have to be patient. I know that uh, all these deaths, you know, this black on black crime, uh, we're concerned about all of that. And we're, we're tackling those issues. Uh, some people might think that we ought to solve all these problems overnight, but it's going to take some, take some time because we got to energize our police department and we're working on that. Uh, we've got to do some planning in the future. Uh, we're going to do some tactical planning where we're going to ask the council to do some investment in law enforcement next year because uh, I think we need some more tools to, mo to be more effective in solving some of these crimes. Uh, you know, we, we y'all have asked me about the cameras, and I'm sorry to tell you that I'm not real happy with our cameras. And we're going to do the best we can with, with those. That, that's $500,000 that the previous administration invested in, and I think it is not, was not a real good investment. But we're going to work with that, that program and, and do what we can. Um, the other thing that I want to tell y'all about, we got uh, a water award grant for $10 million from Senator Wicker. Uh, I got a letter yesterday saying that we're in that program. So, again. Is it, is it specific? Did he get specifics? It's about his? water and sewer. The water and sewer. Yes, ma'am. And, and this is a program that's something that is just constantly goes on. Okay. So we're, we're looking for, for good things there. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Yes, sir. Uh, when you said something Not about, about Pally No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, about the cameras, because I have a lot yes, of resident asks about that. So or we're not going to put any more out because of... Well, we're going to have to make some adjustments, because one of the things that, that we're having problems with is that we don't have a room where we have uh, audio and, and visual uh, cameras or, or televisions up on the wall where we can see the, the cameras. We don't have the uh, where for all to adapt to where. We ought to have a system where you can, if you get, you, you got, I got cameras at my house. We don't have a system that I, the police department can't monitor my cameras. We should have had that. I don't know, I don't know everything that, that they have provided for us that would fit the city's needs. Uh, but we're working on it. We're going to, I mean, you know, again, I think we just have to be patient. I mean, we stuck with it and we're going to just have to make adjustments to try to do what we can to fix it, make it better. But can we give, I mean, the uh, reason I've asked that, because I have several people asking for them, can we get some for the location or are you saying we just on a pause right now? Well, I would, I would suggest we be on a pause right now because eventually what I, I would like to do is have a different system. Because I think we ought to have a system where if you as a homeowner want the police department to have access to your cameras to see something, you could, you could do that. We don't have that availability now. and uh, But we're stuck with it. We're, we're, we got a five year uh, contract that we just stuck with, from my understanding. Um, Are there any improvements that we can do at, presently with that? Uh, well, one of the things, you know, what, what I, I personally would like us to have a room where we have uh, televisions or, or monitors, a monitor room where we can watch the cameras 
and and we have some problems with the the cameras going down on us because we got too many people watching uh, or too much access. And I, I think that we got to look at that and see what what we can do better. Uh, the cameras themselves are good cameras, mm -hmm. but the system is not a good system. So we got we've got to squeeze it or massage it a little bit and, and make it better. Have we checked with the uh, company to see if they offer any upgrade uh, to the system to provide some of these things that we're looking for? Uh, what I would say to you, what one of the problems, the company that we're dealing with right now, they just started getting into business last year. And they are not, they don't have all the concepts that's out there. Technology is the future of law enforcement. And we're going to do some things different from this. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about some things that I think that uh, the police department can get involved in doing or doing differently to uh, help them fight crime. Isn't the sheriff's department using our system also? They have access, but I, w I was with the sheriff's office the other day, and they, they're not satisfied with me. Now, they have a system that's different from ours that they're using like crazy. But we do want the community to know that I, we do have cameras and they are working. Yeah, I mean, they're they, working. They're yeah. working. They're just not working like but I would like them to be. Okay, but they are working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're going to probably move some around and some hot spots and uh, that kind of stuff. Like I said, we're, gonna, we're, we're stuck with what we've got. Mm -hmm. It's not the best. There's, like I said, technology is the future in law enforcement. And we're going to have to invest in that in the future. Uh, there are some things that I'm sure that <clears throat> when budget time comes, that the police department is going to be asking for more equipment to better fight crime. Well, um, we know we're with the police. Um, Chief Young, 110 percent on anything you need. It ain't no limit on that. So I'm I'm supporting that to try to deal with the situation we got here in in, uh, in yeah. Meridian. So whatever it is. I mean, I know I can't speak for everyone. I know I can speak for myself and uh, Ward, mm -hmm. too. I know we need it. Yeah. And whatever they I, need. I mean, you know, like I said, you know. The whole city need it. But, uh, yeah, the whole city does need it. I mean, you know, the thing that, that we've got to do is be, a, one of the old sayings used to be, we, we need to not work harder, but work smarter. Because technology is the future. And we've got to use technology in, in, in our police department to, to provide them with the kind of equipment that they need to fight crime. Well, we're here to improve. Okay. We're, we're here to help cool. improve. So. All right. And so you won't be, um, if someone asks about a camera, you just just say, do we tell them to wait for the new upgrades or or just What I would say, and I have people, I, I've had people... Uh, actually, when, when I first got elected, I got in office first few months, I've had a lot of people call me and say, you know, I want one of those cameras. Well, I don't think it's cost effective for everybody to get a camera from from these folks. Because right. I, I just don't see it. Happening. Be patient to wait for the new system that you, yeah. would, you recommend for our community and then they could get those camera systems. Because yeah. I know there's businesses with probably buy cameras and want cameras. And, and, but the technology that we're on the level that we're on right now is just not the one we, where we need to be. It's unfortunate, but that's where we are. Now they can use their own camera system if they have one to present to the police department, correct? Well, just like me, I have, like I said, I have cameras at my home and uh, my home has been broke in before. So cameras are to catch the folks. You can't stop somebody from breaking in your home if that's if that's what you're gonna have a camera for. Now you can Not have an alarm system. system. I got an alarm system. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, and I, I would encourage people that if they have an alarm system, get a, a audible alarm. Don't get a silent alarm because silent alarms are not going to do it. Well, they're going to go off, but they will keep the criminal in, in, in the place as opposed to making getting them the heck out of there. An audible alarm will make them say, oh, somebody's they hear. Somebody's looking. So they run it. So. Well, I think they just want the cameras for uh, put these, you know, catch the criminal 
sure. put them in jail, so lock them up or whatever, those type things. So if they have a camera, just if they see any crime, they can, they can use that and present it to Chief Young sure. or the police department. If they, okay. Surely if they have a, a video of, of a crime that, that has been committed, they could bring that to the police department if they had the capabilities and the police department would investigate that, that crime. Okay. 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 Thank you. I think you do have the right if someone's breaking in your home and you feel you're at bodily harm, you have a right to take whatever action is necessary. Is that correct, Chief? Okay. Right, we don't have to drag them on the inside of the house, do we? I mean, I know. Do they, I don't know, do they have, I've heard people say if they're in the yard, but if they're they in the will house, get in trouble. We right. bring them in the house. That's right. And keep Make it sure low. They're in, if they're in the house, don't. Okay. That's right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, we'll move okay. now to citizens' comments. Roger Burke. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. When I first asked to be placed in this position to speak, uh, I asked Mrs. Clark if she would put me on. I did not know at that time that we would have a work session, as we did last week, to speak about the issue of the traffic light uh, at A Street, that's A as an apple, uh, and the corner of A Street and 22nd Avenue. So uh, I just want to say that I won't go over a lot of the things that you as the council already have heard, the objections we heard. I will say this. Um, the project that the city embarked upon, the 22nd Avenue Seal Ward Parkway project, uh, was presented by the engineers with a traffic light and a crossing at A Street and 22nd Avenue. And that's what the city voted to do and move forward with. Earlier this year, there was an executive decision to remove the traffic light uh, and the crossing, the pedestrian crossing at that intersection. And of course, whenever that was discovered, uh, many of us wanted to voice objections to that. When I say many of us, yes, I admit that I have personal interest in the traffic light staying and the crossing staying at A Street and 22nd Avenue. But I represent many people, many stakeholders, many taxpayers who agree that that traffic light and intersection, the crossing needs to remain. So with those concerns, the first thing we did when we discovered that there had been this decision to remove it, we uh, approached the mayor and he was very courteous and he listened to our objections. Uh, I also had a visit with uh, Director of Public Works, David Hodge. He was very welcoming and he listened to our objections. And now when you, the city council became aware of this ex executive decision. This now has moved, moved to the city council. And I just wanna say that on behalf of myself, behalf of uh, the East Mississippi Electric Power Association, Mr. Randy Carroll, on behalf of stakeholders, uh, Anita Joe and Bill Ross, Mr. Ed Snodgrass and uh, even U.S. Air Force retired Mr. Joseph Gordon, who lives on A Street. Uh, we believe that, yes, uh, the Seal Award project is going to look fabulous. It's going to be great. We do believe that it'll be better if this council will decide to stay the course keep the traffic light and the pedestrian access to the sidewalk to downtown at A Street. And so we just respectfully request that when this comes to a vote for the council, thank you council members for your ears. You have heard our objections as well and we thank you for that. So as this project continues, I would just ask, I was relieved actually at the work session when uh, the representatives from 
Neil Schaefer said that you could have a traffic light at that intersection that could be programmed to minimize any traffic buildup at that intersection and still allow commerce to flourish uh, as we think that it will. And uh, we ask that you will consider that and we respectfully ask for your vote to stay the course and keep the light and the crossing intersection at A Street and 22nd Avenue. Thank you. Uh, Edwina Wilson. Can you have someone help? He's 99, y'all. Please help you. <laughs> Did he hand him the mic, Mr. Uh, Roger, Roger, if you don't mind? Can you just hand him the mic okay. so you don't have to stand? I'm okay. You say he's the oldest voter. I want to hear you. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Hi. To the Honor Mayor Smith, City Council, fellow citizen, I'm Edwin Wilson, live at 1934 22nd Avenue Height, where I was born 99 years ago. I'm in the same spot where I was born 99 years ago. I'm here to address the problem I have there. On 22nd Avenue, in this little area, there are 11 houses, five on my right and five on my left. And all the water come down the street, all the water come down the street and ditch come across my driveway. Everything come from both ways, from five this way and five the other way. Oh, I've had some people to come and see about the bell came to look at it. Uh, the my city councilman took, came twice and looked at it. The person that uh, over the streets and what have you, assistant and the person that led a team that dug my ditch out, came to see it. Uh, and lo and behold, a beautiful black female, I guess legal person came to convince me that uh, the city couldn't pay to fix my driveway. During the uh, while back, uh, they were building a bridge in the street and they parked a truck on my driveway and broke it in. They replaced that driveway and I was told that it naturally would crack, but no, it's broken where well, the traffic come in on the driveway is broken, not cracked. It shouldn't be broken now. And I think that what's happened, I will be out and trying to tell the workers, please don't dig my driveway out, please. I'm trying to tell you where the problem is, they won't listen. They call the police on me in my driveway. The problem happened to uh, one home, uh, two uh, houses plus two lots from my house flooded. The water come from back of the house off the hill, a house away from me, but they came and dug my driveway out right in front of my house. Every time it happened out there, they'd come and dig my driveway out. And they ne never fix it, never come back. They come and see it and that's it. Hmm. Never see them. Uh, they tell me they uh, looking at my pictures. I got pictures here. You, would be, I, uh, My concern is asking uh, President Thomas, the former uh, 
council committee to come out and really assess the problem. Not just drive out there and look at it and come back and that's it. Assess the problem where the problem is. It's never be addressed. And I know this, uh, you have so many things that's going on, but after that, I'd like to address something else I'm concerned about. And that is, Meridian is dying just before our eyes. We're building the Sealer Ward driveway coming in where people can come, Edith Wildman, Cesar Max in the three foot building and leave. What we should be concerned about is the community, someone come into Meridian and want to live, stay here, pay tax and live and build, work and build Meridian up. But we working to get people to come and see the Max, Edith Wildman, and see the three foot building and leave. If I could tell you, I'd tell you something would help us get the communities going. But lo and behold, I want you, someone to fix my ditch and fix my driveway. Don't pat me on the back and say thank you for your service. I want you to fix my driveway and fix the ditch and be concerned about and listen what's going on on 22nd Avenue Heights where I live. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I was away, excuse me, I was away from Meridian three years. I went to Guadalcanal Island, the Philippine Island, and Tokyo, Japan, where we dropped an atomic bomb to end World War II. Thank you. All right. Wow, thank All you for right. your service. <laughs> Mr. Edwina uh, Wilson is in my um, ward and um, can we do something to assist his driveway in his ditch? Um, is there, I mean, president, um, because if they would have just left it alone, I, I mean, I try to stop and prevent some of this and, you know, I've came and seen the problem twice and it is cracked. What can we do as a city to help um, fix this problem? I think we can get public works and the council involved and look at what we can do. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Jim, you have Thank a lady you. I'd like for you to introduce. She's here. A new lady out at the Naval Air Station is going to be working with us. Oh, I got it. Is this something else on? Oh, you ready to do Dr. Thomas. Is this something else on here? I just want him to introduce this lady. Okay. He's 99, y'all. He's 99. He's 99. I already told y'all. That's what that means. Shoot. Thank you. I've retired after um, 12 years at the Naval Air Station, actually, 32 altogether. Um, Sue Chamberlain is coming from Keesler Air Force Base to replace me. And Hello. I'll give her the same support that she gave me. Thank you. And, um, and sir, I am looking to live here, not just move through here. So I've been hitting the ground running since for about two weeks now looking for a house. So if you find, you want me in your neighborhood, please let me know. I'll please. help you war five. Okay, yes, cool. Thank you. Okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I have to say I'm falling in love. Um, I moved up from Bay St. Louis. Um, I've been going home on weekends to kind of pick stuff up, bring it up here, but I have to say I've fallen in love. And I think what really um, made my heart pound was actually going through downtown and seeing how large the downtown is and to see the shops that are popping up. It's really exciting. It's, um, you know, big downtown fan from when I was little, little, um, when my grandmother used to take me in downtown on weekends. But um, I have to say, I'm just, um, I'm really blown away. I think I'm really going to love it up here. So I just want to say thank you for welcoming me. 
Also want to say that there are glitches, so I'm not 100% reachable yet, but I swear to God, by the end of tomorrow or by the end of um, at least this week, I know I will be reachable. So I'll send some emails out um, so that you guys can contact me if you have any questions, um, any projects you want to work on. I'll make sure. Thank you for the welcome. Um, the base is lovely. It really, really is. It's very, it's very pretty. Um, but more important, the planes are really active, which really makes my heart sing. So um, part of my job is to um, make sure the planes can continue to fly. So if you have concerns, if you have thoughts, um, if you have projects, please let me know because um, I'm looking forward to working with you. Good. Thank you, ma'am. Well, ma you Thank you for having Where me. are you working at now? Uh, so right now I've started at Naval Air Station Meridian. I am the community planning liaison officer, so you'll be seeing me a lot at council meetings and mm -hmm. board of supervisors meetings. Mm -hmm. um, most of my responsibility is going to be on the other side of the fence, so on your side of the fence, and um, making sure that we have a compatible relationship. Your name again? Sue Chamberlain. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Welcome. you. Nice meeting you. Nice I meeting move you. to council remarks. Ms. Lindsay. Yay. This is a great day. It's so many wonderful things. Um, and that even th that brings a great day. Um, I'm excited to say um, skate park. We're going to be skating and rolling on, on a path of uh, greatness. How about that? And not just for the skate park, but the city of Meridian. And I'm excited about that. And we're just going to continue to do, bring more activities, help lower crime, bring more industries, more businesses. It's, it's wonderful, guys. Just keep being optimistic. Keep your prayers up for the city of Meridian. And, um, hey, I'm going to celebrate. Y'all be blessed. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Thank you for the support of the uh, James Cheney uh, Life, Liberty, and Pursuit of Happiness event that we had this weekend. It was lovely. We thank Angela Lewis for coming. Great speaker, his daughter. Uh, amazing speaker. You all need to get her for any of your events. It was not a sad occasion. It was a wonderful occasion. Uh, as we tried to get people also registered to vote, we realized that it just because election time it's not for us, it's still for others that is, and we'll have something in June. So we want people to continue to register to vote. When I looked at the fact that our problem now is not just voting, we have a bigger problem now when we deal with the, the crime of our uh, senseless killings in our, in our communities, not just Meridian, but that's throughout the United States. And so the um, song that resonated through my head, mind was we shall overcome someday and then i thought about we always ask the question when is someday how are we going to overcome what are we going to do to overcome we got to do we really got the parents and and family communities we got to open up our mouths I saw, I happened to be exposed in, in the environment where there was a, 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 a foot chase, a police foot chase with the dogs after the killing of the gentleman a few days ago, last week or whatever. And uh, I was with my pre-K kids, but I was on a, watching the foot chase go on. And it was a fear went across me. And hearing people telling the person to run, run, run. So my thing is, it, what are we doing to help our communities? All of us are responsible, and it, it, it hurts. But again, I say thank you to, always saying thank you to Public Works. Thank you to all of our departments, the police, all of you all. Thank you to every department that helped make uh, the events that we have and a success in taking care of our community. I wanted to let you know, I went to, to the Salvation Army's open house. It was, it's beautiful, you guys. They're gonna have some amazing thing going, things going on in that building. Uh, so if you have not been by there for their open house, make sure you make it there. And uh, we have state ga games coming up. We wanna share that. We know that state games 
is a key factor in our community. So let us let us uh, support all these things. And I'm thanking God we have a neighborhood watch going on, and they are active. I just I'm asking our like I asked our neighborhood watch members when we were there. When we come with the problem, I'm I'm so solution focused. I want to know what solutions do you have for that? Because we come and we ask for different things, and I talk, we were saying, okay, maybe y'all can raise some funds for cameras in your in your area in your community. Maybe you can help. And I don't think neighborhood watches just to sit in the building and complain. I think we should come out and be visible also in the community. I think Rita, Lieutenant Rita Jack. And all those that have come out to support and each and every one, we're we're at Westwood so far and at, and uh and at First Union Baptist Church so far in our community. I'm asking that our Sawashi Court group come out so that we can have some activity going on all the way through Ward Four. And I have plenty of people I just want to applaud in my community. We have some voices in Ward Four that like Johnny Delk is still out and about. I want you all to continue to pray for Randall Jennings. Uh, he's going, undergoing different uh, medical things, but his voice is still live and active in our communities. You, uh, and I tell people, we have a heart for our community, whether we're in position as a council person, mayor, or someone working with the city. If we are a citizen here and you're not in Meridian, Mississippi, uh, I, it's my, my job and our job to listen to the people that have those that heart and compassion for our community. And even if we just try one of the things they said, let me try one thing that you said and see that will it work a little bit different, a little bit better. Again, I thank you all again, and we're looking forward to another Life, Liberty, and Pursuit of Happiness event with more support. We had all sprinkles of colors there. I got a chance to dance with Mr. Tom Williams. So we, <laughs> so we had a great time, and I think uh, we had Mr. Roger Burke. He was there. Some of you were out there, and I thank you guys for coming. Thanks. <laughs> you want me to keep on talking? <laughs> some more. George, tell me, let's take up the offering plate. <laughs> okay. Uh, like I said, I also like to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, I thank the chief and uh, her staff for the hard work they're doing uh, to keep the community safe. Uh, and we speak about crime and uh, we losing a lot of kids, uh, what it amounts to. And with May being National Mental Health Awareness Month, I want parents to make sure that uh, th these are their children, classmates, friends. So make sure that we are uh, paying attention to the youth uh, and looking for signs of, of depression uh, because it affects them. I mean, you go to school, you see a person one day, the next day you don't see them. I mean, so I just want to make sure that we are monitoring our youth to uh, be in a support system for them. Mm -hmm. oh. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out. It's a blessing to see everyone, and it's a blessing to wake up in the morning wake, uh, where you be able to open both of your eyes and see another day. Uh, one thing I'm going to mention is uh, Mr. Wilson. Uh, he is 99 years old, and I think he'll be 100 years old this year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he was my school teacher, a school teacher right. of my mom <laughs> and my dad, so I know him very well. Right. Uh, one of the things I, I want to say on his behalf is, and pretty much he explained about his driveway and the ditches, which I had said earlier, it is a problem. It is a situation, and by you going out there just viewing it and not doing something about it, that's a problem, especially when they are taxpayers and they are paying our salaries. They're taxpayers, they're paying this consent decree. All this stuff that we doing is coming from taxpayers' dollars, property tax, what they buy food and beverage. We just look, overlook at that because of what position we are in, and we don't need to do that. Uh, a lot of know Mr. Wilson, the city don't pretty much take care of your driveway. I'll be out there to take care of your driveway. I, got, I know some people, so I'll let Yay. you know that. So I'll be out there to check that out. Um, next thing, police chief, police department, behind y'all 100%, whatever y'all need, but it's time coming up, we're going to give you everything you need plus more. Mm -hmm. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So we're going to let y'all know that we are behind y'all. So whatever y'all need, we got you. Jason ain't leave you out either. So we're behind the fire department also. Because with them, 
We wouldn't be in the place that we are now and safe if we are from fires and all the other things that goes into the city. So I'm behind all of them 110%. Um, the cleaning of the city and the residents, if we just can take time out to just look around, not just our own surroundings, but the city as a whole, we would go a little bit further than where we are. Just like Mr. Wilson said, we can't just focus on people just coming to town and leaving the next day. We got to focus on the ones that's staying here. And we want more people to stay here because what that happened, there's more tax dollars for us, property tax. And that's how we pay our bills. So we need to be focused on our residents, business owners, all the ones that, that's here to make Meridian thrive. That's what's making Meridian, Meridian thrive. Not so much of the money that's coming from the outside. It's the people that are staying here. I've been here 50, over 50 years. And I know I ain't never paid this much taxes. I complain to myself. But at the same time, I know that's the only way this city is going to run. But um, other than that, i like for everyone. I thank everyone for coming out. Uh, if you have any issues or problems, feel free to let me know. I, I don't only represent Ward 2, but the city of Maria as a whole. All right, thank you. Yeah, we've had a lot of, uh, like we were talking about the police department, they're, they're catching people, which is good. If the judicial system now will make them pay, uh, that's going to be a concern. Uh, you know, at the same time, the children at Meridian High School were meeting and planning for graduation. One of their classmates, it was in two weeks of graduation, was murdered. Uh, the other young child that was with him, I think, graduated last year. And the one that murdered him, I think, graduated about five years ago. So uh, it's a problem. They're doing the best they can. Uh, they arrest people, which is, which is good. There are a lot of activities going on. People that say there's nothing to do in Meridian. I don't know who you are. Uh, <laughs> The moon on fifth or the fifth on moon or whatever you call it down there was a great success. The three foot festival's going on. Jimmy Rogers is going on. Crawfish balls are going on. MCC is having to play about Jimmy Rogers. They're registering children for the kids college. The baseball team will be playing Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, hopefully for playoffs. The Riley Center's got programs going on. Parks and Recreation, Thomas is signing up people to play ball and do different things this summer. The little theaters having plays. The symphonies having concerts. So, you know, when people say there's nothing to do in Meridian, uh, there's more than most of us can do. And it's most of it's a good thing. They don't rely on the government to do it. They do it on their own, which is even better. So there are a lot of good things going on. Uh, we are going to have a work session next Tuesday uh, to discuss several things that they're coming up. Uh, at this point, we need a motion to go and close the termination concerning economic development. So move. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we go into closed termination to decide whether or not staying in executive session for economic development. economic development. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Yes. Yeah. So we're going to have a closed termination. If you'll clear the chambers, please. <laughs> And please, if you have conversations, please take them outside the chambers.